And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at one of my most anticipated games from Essen, that's Sarah's Vision. Now, I was really intrigued with this game for a couple reasons. One, it has kind of a utopian future, the cover looks really cool. Um, two, this game was made by an insurance company, they made it for their employees, and then decided to share it with the world, which is a kind of an, a, neat, a neat concept, right? This game comes out and then other people can play it. And three, Jenga's involved. By what I mean is, this game comes with a tower of blocks that you're going to be playing Jenga with, essentially, but there's a game that's built around that. Huh. Well, let's see how the game plays. In this game, you're going to have three different characters, uh, a senator, engineer, and scientist. And so the game comes with various standees, but you can use any ones you want. It doesn't really matter. You'll put them in a little marker here just to show, for example, that she's the scientist here in the bio lab. So each of these is represented by a column over here, and there's a danger zone for each of the characters. And if you ever have five cubes in one of their danger zones, then you lose. On the other hand, you're going to have 20 events that you have to go through. You're going to open up one of the three event packs in the set. I have one placed out there. You can play with them in a very specific order that they're in, or if you've already done it, you can kind of shuffle them and do them in a random order. And you have to go through all 20 events without getting someone to five or more danger cubes, and then you'll win. So each player is going to take a turn, and on your turn you're going to do a good action and then you will resolve the next event. Now, let's talk about resolving an event first. When we resolve an event, it's going to put danger cubes on the board, so it shows that it's going to put one here, 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 and here, and then it will put an inspiration cube here. So if a cube is in the same spot as one of the people, they're going to pick it up and put it in their danger zone. And you don't necessarily want that. If they're in the same spot as an inspiration cube, they're going to pick that up and put it on the board here based on what area they're in. If they're in the agency headquarters, you can go anywhere. If they're in a spaceport, it would go in their technical area, etc. Some of the event cards will have other things that happen here, like for example, says Senator, Engineer, and Scientist move to the Senate. So everybody would move up here to the Senate. They're in, so there's various things that are going to happen. Now players are trying to manipulate these event cards so that doesn't happen. So on your turn, you have various actions you can take. You can swap two of the event cards in a row. You can remove one of them, get rid of it. You can reveal face down ones. Every time an event happens, you'll slide the rest down and you will pull out the new one, but it's face down. It's not face up. So you can reveal the face up one down and see what's happening. And you can cover these outline spaces on event cards. So you're going to be able to cover this outlined area here, which would keep this from going off. And sometimes, like for example, this hack discovered, covering this up would keep two of the danger cubes from coming on the board. The other thing you do is you can draw a direction card. And these are cards that players can play over the course of the game and do various things. Now, how do you do all these actions? I mean, why wouldn't you just get rid of events all the time? Each of these actions has a cost, and this is where the Jenga thing comes into play. So if I want to swap two event cards, for example, I need to pay one green. So I'm going to look here for any block that's not in the top three levels, and I'm going to pull that block out and put it on top. If I want to remove a random event, I need to do four yellows. That is a lot more difficult to do because I'm going to have to pull four blocks and put them on top. If at any point the tower falls over, then the next five events immediately occur, which could hurt you tremendously. You'll rebuild the tower, but that's still kind of a risky thing for that to have happened. You can add more blocks by, when you get inspiration cubes, if you fill in a whole row here, you'll take the block at the end of the row, and you will add that over here next to your tower in the unlock blocks where you can just use this block, but once you use it, it goes on top of the tower. And if you fill a whole column here like this, then you get both of these blocks at the end and the same thing. These blocks, you'll notice, have two different colors on them, and you'll be able to use those for either color when you're doing that. 
You can also use cubes from here as if they are a block of that type to do different actions. So inspiration is pretty helpful. When you're covering up one of these spots in the board, you are simply just taking a block of that type and covering it up like that. That's pretty much the whole game. You're just going to be spending blocks and doing things to build on this tower. The tower is going to get very Jenga-ish and try to go through this whole event deck. The artwork for the game is very futuristic. You can see on here the different areas on the board and how the artwork looks, and it looks pretty good. Um, I like this kind of futuristic, utopian type thing, except there's bad guys. The cards themselves and the event cards, sometimes there's story cards, and this will tell you. Sarah is kind of this thing that's helping, helping you, explaining the game to you. The card game also comes with these cards that tell you what you can do on your turn. I would have preferred if these cards didn't have pointy edges, but that's pretty much my only complaint about that. But I think we're mostly concerned here about these. Now these blocks, they come stickered, although not all the stickers were put on uh, in the center, which bothered some people. I thought it was okay. But these are plastic, so most Jenga games have wooden blocks. Plastic blocks have a completely different feel to them. They're fairly light, but as, as a game of Jenga, at the end of the day, I felt like it played pretty much the same way. The tower seems to have the same kind of structure. It's going to get tilty and maybe fall, but overall, I think it works for what the game's trying to do, just as well as wooden blocks do, and it makes the game less heavy to carry around. Well, that's that. It's, you know, it's a cooperative game where you're all working together and you're all pulling Jenga blocks. And I'll say this. So there's three scenarios. The scenarios are slightly different in how they play out. And you can play the scenarios like they said. When you're done, you can just shuffle the event cards and put them in a random order. That's fine. You will completely lose out on the story line if you do that because the story happens in a random order. You just don't read it. You're just playing the game at that point. The story's okay. Bad guys are trying to blow up the city, Elysium style. But Sarah's vision itself is about this cooperative game that's based on Jenga. And let me tell you this, if you don't like Jenga, you won't like the game. The game's very Jenga-y. And I know I keep saying Jenga a lot in this thing, but every time you teach this to somebody, every time you bring it out, people are going to say that. It's about pulling those blocks and putting them on top. Risk-reward type thing. I really want to get rid of an event card. That's a pretty powerful thing. There's some nasty event cards that come up that put lots of danger cubes on the board. So uh, I want to pull a lot of blocks, but that's a lot of blocks to put on top of the tower. Also, between turns, after, ever, after an event card goes, you can play these directive cards. Now, these directive cards have all sorts of things. They cost purple blocks to do them. So you pull these purple blocks, but they can you know, let you move people to a different location. That's a pretty powerful thing to do because you're trying to move them out of spots because as the game goes by, danger cubes accumulate on the board. If there's three danger cubes and someone moves into that spot, they pick up all three. That could kill them. So this game is very possible to win. I've won it, i lost it. Um, I don't know though that the game hinges on these, this is cool strategy, knowing which events is strategy, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to the dexterity element of the Jenga. And I can easily say if you don't like this aspect of pulling things from a tower, you won't like the game. Now, that being said, is it more than that? For sure. There is those different decisions that have to be made. I really like the idea of filling out a row and a column and getting that and adding it to the tower. Here's the reason though that it ultimately I'm not putting the seal of approval on this because I think this is a fascinating game and interesting and fun to play once, maybe twice. Gameplay plays out pretty much the same thing. Once you play it, you're like, that's an interesting experience and that's neat and I applaud that. I think it's a cool idea. I just don't want to keep playing Jenga all the time with a game build around it. I feel like kind of we're doing the same thing in each game. It's just that the events come up in a different order. So because of that and because of how big it is and everything, I, you know, if it was a small little dexterity game, that's one thing. This is kind of a big game that I had fun with it. The second time I was kind of like, eh, you know, this is the same thing over again. So with that being said, I think this might be a game that some people may enjoy a lot and want to play over and over again, but I would imagine there are people who like dexterity games overall and cooperative because those are the two main aspects of this. 
for me. I think it's an amazingly cool production. I really look forward to seeing what this company does next. I had a decent time playing it. I'm just not sure I want to go back and do it again. Dice Tower Judgment, fascinating, but very Jenga. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.